Hey, what's up everybody? Tutal Toby here, and in today's On Shape step-by-step -step tutorial, we're gonna take a look at a tier one challenge from the Tutal Toby library of 2D to 3D challenges. Now this is found at tutaltoby.com, and you can see here that in this library, we've got over 150 2D to 3D CAD challenges, and they are in a wide variety of difficulty or complexity levels. Well, if you're just getting started in your 3D CAD journey, you'll be very happy to see that we've got a filter function here on the website, so show filters, and then we can filter by tier one challenges. And all these tier one challenges generally require two or three features in the tree to complete the challenge. So they are relatively simple, but the perfect speed for a brand new beginner 3D CAD user. And so one of those tier one challenges is this one here, 24 10-05. Now this is a challenge that is exclusively available for our Practice Models Premium subscribers. So if you wanna get access to the entire library, you can sign up for Practice Models Premium, but we are trying to create tutorials for every single model in the library. So let's make a video today on 24-10-05, the Steel Protractor. So we're gonna scroll down here, we're gonna say click here to begin and go. So we can see here, what is the mass of this part in XXX grams? We're gonna try to calculate that and put it right down here in this mass box. We can see here that the material is plain carbon steel. The unit system is millimeters. Here's the material density. And for a model like this, I think we can do the whole thing with one sketch and then just extrude that sketch out to the wall thickness of three millimeters. But what gets a little bit tricky with this model is the way that these radii are dimensioned. And you'll see this a lot in 2D drawings. The radius will have an extension line that goes down to the center of the radius. And that will often be referencing some other piece of geometry, like a vertex on the model, or in this case, the center of a hole in the model. So we've got this hole here, which is six millimeters up from the bottom. And then we've got this radius coming off off of it, which is a radius of 80 millimeters. So that radius of 80 millimeters is gonna go up and around like this, then another straight line, and then we're gonna close this off. Well, if that's 80 millimeters, then the width here at the bottom should be 160. And then when we look at the dimension, we can see that it is 160. So that's the only thing that's kind of tricky about this sketch is just learning how these radii are dimensioned sometimes in drawings, and then kind of deciding on where you're gonna start the sketch. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the origin down here, then I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna come up six millimeters, then I'll make the arc, come down six millimeters, close that off, and then I will locate this hole, and then I will finish up by adding this additional arc here with this flat spot on the bottom. So that's kind of my game plan. Now that we've got a game plan, let's move this over to our second screen. Let's bring up our keyboard cam and let's get into it here in Onshape. I'm gonna say create document 24-10-05 space dash space steel protractor. And I am gonna save this into the public space in Onshape. So if anybody ever gets logged into Onshape and wants to look up this document, you can just search for this 24-10-05. And so now I'm gonna to go to my hamburger menu up here. And in the hamburger menu, I'm gonna to go to workspace units and just make sure that we are working in millimeters, make sure that we are working in grams. And we are working in both millimeters and grams, so we are good to go here. So we hit the green check mark, we go front plane, S key, begin a sketch, N key to get normal two, and then I'm gonna use the S key to begin a line command. And this line is gonna start here, it's gonna come over, I guess this will be 160 over two. It's gonna come over half the distance of that 160. Now I'm gonna make another line here that comes up, single click, let go of my mouse, six, Okay, and now I'm gonna create a line using a shortcut that we have in Onshape where without clicking anything, I'm just gonna put my mouse over this point. And then I'm gonna move away again. And now you see I'm in a tangent arc. And so that tangent arc is gonna come up and around like so. And then I'm gonna single click and we'll say that we want that to be one, six, zero. Oh yeah, that looks, actually that does not look good. Let me hit escape there. We're gonna make that 80, eight, zero. There we go. That's what we want that to be, not 160. We want that to be 80. And then we are going to create a line here that goes from this point 
down to the horizontal to the origin. So you can see the origin is showing up there in orange. And you can see that I'm getting that uh, white horizontal relationship. Single click, and then we'll close off this sketch here like so. And there we go. We can hit escape, and that gives us the beginning of that sketch. And so now maybe what we could do is put in our circle. So S key circle, and we're going to drop in a circle right here. Single click, move our mouse, single click. And that circle is going to have a diameter of four millimeters four millimeters for that circle and then we can finish off here by adding in that final arc up top so we could do that arc using maybe uh the arc command here we could just do a three point arc so single click single click single click and when you do that third click you can let go of your mouse so you can type in the radius 55 enter and then we can um hit escape to get out of the arc command and we can click on this point here and then move our mouse down and click on this point here you can see I've got two things selected. Now, if you've got more than two things selected, like if I pick on this arc here, and now you see I've got three things, you could just hit the space bar, and what the space bar will do is it'll clear all of your selections. And then you could try again. So it's gonna be this point, maybe zoom in a little, and this point. And then what you can do is you can press the letter I on your keyboard. I is the shortcut for coincident. So it moves those two points right on top of one another. And now we can begin the line command and we can single click here on the arc and move our, our mouse over here and single click here on the arc. It doesn't matter if you click down there at the bottom or if you click up top here like so, like make a short segment. It doesn't matter because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the trim command. So you click the trim command here, the little scissors. And then what you're going to do is click and drag. And when you click and drag, you're going to get this little squiggly line here. Well, all you do is you hold down. I'm holding down my left button on my mouse. So you click and drag and you click and drag right through that, that arc there and right through that arc there and that performs a trim. And now you can hit escape and now you can see here you can move this line up and down and the end points of the arc stay right with that line. So now the last thing to do is just S key dimension. The dimension is going to go from this line to this point here at the center of that circle. So from that line to that point at the center of the circle, and that distance is going to be 12. Okay, and we can see that on the drawing, we've got this dimension here of six coming up from the bottom, then the dimension of 12 going up from that sixth dimension. And so once you've got all that geometry in place, you should see that your sketch is showing up over here. There's no minus sign. That's what we want. So we're going to choose extrude, and that extrude is going to go out to a depth of three millimeters. And I would probably opt to make this symmetric. You know, if I don't know anything else about the project, then I'm probably going to opt to make this one symmetric. So we make this symmetric. We hit the green check mark. And there we go. That looks pretty close to what we're seeing in the drawing. Maybe what we could do now is we could press the letter P on our keyboard. P is going to hide your planes. And then what you can do is go over here to the name of the part over in the parts list. Right click. You could say edit appearance and kind of change the appearance to match what the customer gave us. It's almost this like paisley yellow here. And then we hit the green check mark. And then we're going to right click on that uh, on that name of that part again in the part studio and we're going to say assign material and this material is going to come from the two tall toby custom materials library and it's going to use what's called plain carbon steel as the material there from that library and then if we go down here behind the clock we've got this option for mass properties so we're going to click on that button for mass properties and then click anywhere on the part and we're, we are coming up with a mass here of 176.9 so i'm going to call that one seven seven or i could even type in one seven six point nine and enter and oh yeah we got it correct so seven minutes and 30 seconds that was a little bit of a longer tutorial for a tier one part but like i said that part did have some kind of tricky sketching so i'm going to say submit and let's see how we did against the rest of the field so if we go down here to our top 100 list, we can see that we are number 83 out of 113. Not that bad, almost in the middle of the pack. So I like that, you know, and if we go to data and analytics, we can see that the average time for this model was five minutes and 53 seconds. And then our time was seven minutes and 30 seconds. So we could maybe use the try again function to try to get our time down below the average time. That's usually my goal. But I think for today, I'm pretty happy with how this tutorial turned out. And if you are happy with how this tutorial turned out, be sure to hit the like button on this video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next on shape step-by-step -step tutorial. See you, everybody.